have another big section, but the wall itself looks pretty bad. Hello everybody, my name is Tyler Lloyd and if you subscribe to this channel, you will know that last year my wife and I moved to Kentucky and we bought a fixer upper. A fixer upper that required a little bit more fixing than we were originally hoping to do, definitely in the first year. But as we've been doing stuff, one of the things that I've been thinking about is the energy efficiency of our house. One, to cut down on heating and cooling costs, but also just to have a smaller footprint. And while I have addressed a lot of the things that I knew were wrong in our house or could you know, be improved upon, I figured that there were things that I was missing. So I called in the professionals. I'm Eric George, and this is David Clevenger from Building Performance here in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, we're here doing an energy audit on this house today, and we got the blower door set up behind us. We're gonna do an air leakage test with the blower door. We're gonna do a duct leakage test uh, with a pressure pan. We're gonna use an infrared camera to see where air is leaking in and out of the house and where there's uh, missing or insufficient insulation behind walls and ceilings. Um, check the crawl space, check the attic, check the HVAC system, and uh, see what we can find today. So we got the blower door set up right here. And what you got is a big fan that's basically gonna take the air that's inside the house, blow it out through the fan, and that's gonna depressurize the house. Uh, this right here is the pressure gauge that's gonna tell us how leaky the house is. And so um, normally a house of this age and this size is going to have an air leakage rate of around one CFM of air leakage per square foot of total house. With that in mind, we're going to go ahead and turn it on and see what the number is. All right, so uh, how, how bad is it? <laughs> so we, we ran the blower door and what we do is we get to a pressure difference of 50 pascals of pressure and it's just a building science standard measurement. Uh, but right here we hit, we locked it in so you could see what the number was um, at that 50 pascal pressure difference was almost 2400 CFM of air leakage. And a house this size, it's about 1500 square feet, we would normally want to see, uh, an average rate would be about 1500 CFM, one to one uh, ratio. So we've got some room to improve for sure on this house. I mean, even getting to the one to one would be an 800, 900 CFM improvement. And on this house, that would that'd be pretty significant. And the results of the blower door test confirmed what I already knew, that our house is kind of leaky. But further testing that they did helped pinpoint the areas where we can actually focus on and have the greatest amount of improvement. Some things that really surprised me. Here you can actually see the ceilings missing insulation as well. There's a ceiling joist right here, mm -hmm. and that's the last ceiling joist above uh, the top plate of the exterior wall. When you get a big gust of wind outside, what will happen is the air will come through the soffit, through here, and push the insulation away from the edge of the ceiling. And then you have basically uninsulated parts of your ceiling along the edge of the, uh, the outside wall of the house. There at the top you can see. Oh yeah. So, a little bit of leakage there. And one of the things that they found that really surprised me were these windows. Not the fact that they're old, drafty, and horribly energy inefficient. I already knew that. But something else that I didn't know that could be a very easy fix. And it's right up here where the frame of the window meets the wall. There is a very, very noticeable gap. One that I had never really realized because, well, this is not exactly a vantage point that I have, but there's a big gap right here between the molding and the wall where you can feel cold air seeping into my house. That's uh, yeah, not good. A lot of times people get up in there with the you know, insulation hose and they just kind of blow it willy-nilly without getting all the way out to the corners. Uh, the other thing a lot of times is there's no baffle vents that are installed um, basically where the roof line comes down and meets the exterior wall you have um, you have where the air from the outside is supposed to come up in and ventilate the attic and the space between the roof deck and the top plate of the exterior wall is supposed to be blocked with what's called a baffle vent so the baffle vent will um, basically provide a path for airflow to go up along the underside of the roof deck for, for ventilation purposes, but it also prevents insulation from getting blown off into the soffit and 
and it also helps with the wind washing problem where you know air comes through that soffit and blows the insulation away from the edge so if you ever you know have more insulation blown into your attic you should make sure that the bafflements are installed before that's done so that you have that extra uh, protection for your uh, soffits before we moved we had a home inspection and we knew that we needed more insulation in the attic it's just not something that we've got around to but the thermal cameras confirmed uh, that we had inadequate insulation and in some spots had no insulation whatsoever. One thing that surprised me and that I wasn't really aware of was the lack of insulation in our exterior walls. So when the wall studs are brighter or warmer mm -hmm. color than what's in between them, that means that the wall stud is providing more insulation than what's behind the drywall. <laughs> Because, you know, that's the reality, right? So the, the wood has an R value of one per which inch. Which means there's nothing behind the drywall. There's, not, there's no insulation in there, which I've already seen in other places, but this wall in particular is more cold. So, yeah, R, uh, wood has an R value of one per inch, so you have about an R three and a half plus your drywall and the OSB on the outside just in those lines where the studs are, but everywhere else there's no insulation. And that's mostly due to the age of our home. Our house was built in the 50s, and the U.S. Building Code didn't require insulation in exterior walls until 1965. And that's why this wall, which feels nice and cold, doesn't have any insulation. And while we could have holes poked in there and insulation blown in, we were told that, you know, that may not be where we should focus first. That there are many other things that we could do, many low-hanging fruit, which would give more bang for our buck. I generally don't recommend insulating walls of um, older houses that are not um, that were not insulated to begin with, mainly because there's other places where your money will be better spent. So you could save, you know, 10% or less um, on a utility bill by insulating exterior walls. But if you don't air seal the house first, if you don't air seal the penetrations going through the attic or through the floor, or through the basement, you know, the walls are not usually your biggest problem. Normally what you want to do is you want to focus on air sealing the top of the house first, and then the bottom of the house, and then after those things are done, you know, you can address the windows or the walls or whatever, but air sealing the top and the bottom of the house is by far the most important step that you want to start with. One of the reasons that I reached out to Building Performance Group and really liked having David and Eric out here is that they're not salespeople. A lot of time, if you're looking for an energy auditor in your area, they are an insulation installer first that offers energy audit services, or they're an HVAC company that offers energy audit services. So it benefits them to find problems with your insulation or your HVAC system, because then they have a service that Oh, how convenient that they can sell you. And, you know, that presents some problems for me. So it was great having these guys out because they didn't have anything to sell. They do energy audits on existing homes and new builds. Of course, they have recommendations for different services that I could reach out to, different companies that they've worked with in the area, which was definitely beneficial. Uh, we're going to use one to actually do installation up in our attic but it doesn't benefit them to find problems. So if you're gonna do an energy audit, see if you can find an independent company that only does energy audits. And right now is a good time to do it because there is a tax incentive. You can save money on your taxes uh, by this energy audit. You can get a, a tax credit back and not only on energy audits, but once you find problems, you can save money on insulation, new windows, doors, hot water heaters, uh, heat pumps, solar panels, all sorts of things if you want to be more energy efficient. So why not? Especially if you're going to do it anyway. This wall over here, there's a lot of leakage at the top plate. You can see it coming all the way down the wall. The gap between the can right here and the drywall, the plaster, mm -hmm. and that just needs to be sealed with silicone. Um, and then if the can itself has any holes going through it, we can take um, metal tape and just tape over the holes and then put this back into place and that'll seal that up a lot better. When you install replacement windows, the gap between the original window frame and the wall frame is what needs to be filled and sealed. So it's behind the trim. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't want to go to the expense and the time and the headache of re removing all the trim and filling that with minimal expansion foam, putting the trim back, caulking it, painting and all that stuff, 
You can just use a siliconized latex caulk and caulk both sides of the trim to the wall and to the inside. So like this little gap right here, mm -hmm. you know, caulk that gap and then caulk underneath it. And it'll get, you know, the, it'll stop the air leakage. It's not going to stop the cold from happening around the window, but at least you're not going to feel it. And adding to the list of problems that they found with our home, which sounds like a bad thing, but I'm very grateful for, would be our HVAC system, which died a year ago. And when we had it replaced, we had our old two-ton system replaced with a three-ton system because that's what the company said we needed, which I guess is fine, but they didn't replace the ductwork. So our ductwork is undersized for our system, which is a bit of a problem that we're eventually going to address. There are other things that they pointed out in the crawl space about how one of our vents is kinked, one isn't even properly attached, there are leak points, which are all things that I can easily fix myself. And one thing that I never really thought about was the vents in our bedroom. Our bedroom has supply vents where it blows air into the room, but doesn't have a return vent that uh, takes air into the system. Or maybe I had that reversed. Maybe the supplies returns. I can never get that right. Nevertheless, air blows in, but doesn't go into the system. And whenever it kicks on in the middle of the night, it creates a pressure differential and jars our door. Wow. <laughs> okay. So we're doing a pressure differential with the heating and cooling system running right now. This is going into the master bedroom um, and we shut the door. So what you're looking at is the pressure between the common area of the house and that bedroom with the door shut. I want that number to be as close to zero as possible, meaning that this equal pressure, equal amount of air going into the room is coming back out of the room. Uh, right now it's a 10 pascal pressure difference. So to put that into perspective, Energy Star Home requires a pressure difference of three or less. Less than two. Less than two, so um, way off. So the easy way to see like how much air you need or how much of an opening you need is to kind of slightly open the door until that number hits zero. And then you can actually measure that gap. So Giant gap. It's a large gap. So you'd have to basically, you know, figure up, you know, six foot eight door, about two and a half inches, three inches plus that is, is what you would need. So a saloon door. <laughs> yeah. Or you could put the Tamarack vent at the bottom, like we were talking about earlier, that allows air to come through the bottom of the door. Mm -hmm. You could also install a transfer grill across um, the top of here, mm -hmm. or uh, jump ducts are another option. Or you could have the HVAC company actually put a return duct into this room that had it was large enough to offset that, that, um, that pressure difference. Now I'm not going to cover every little detail of all the problems that they found in our house because it is somewhat extensive. But after the energy audit was done a few days later, they sent us a report that outlined everything and also provided ways that we could fix these problems or suggestions for companies that we could reach out to, which was very, very beneficial to me as a relatively new homeowner who's trying to navigate all this stuff and trying to figure out, okay, What's next on my long list of things to fix? So having someone else give me a little bit of prioritization uh, is very, very welcome. So if you are in the Louisville, Kentucky, Southern Indiana area and interested in an energy audit, uh, please reach out to Building Performance Group. I've uh, provided a link down below to their website. They're great guys, really cool company that um, I think is, is doing good work and trying to you know, save people money and make their houses cozier because right now it is 32 degrees outside and my house is a little drafty, but not for long because I've got the new windows coming. Uh, I'm gonna caulk and fix all the little cracks that I found, fixing the HVAC, and we've got a company in two weeks coming to add spray foam insulation to our attic. So we've got a plan and uh, I'm, I'm just very, very thankful. So until next time, my name is Tyler Lloyd and I wish you the very best. See you later, bye. That's actually in between the window, the new window right here and the frame. You can feel it. It's yeah, so that's not cocked in anywhere. And then on the outside, it doesn't even have the metal flashing mm. around the outside. So you can definitely seal that up. Yeah, so that's going to be done when we have the other windows done. Um, and then I was going to redo all the trim because you can see whoever did it has never used a tool in their life. <laughs>